Oh, hello. Just doing a, um, my first ever live stream of a bit of a grasshopper tutorial since um, my last tutorial got uh, a couple of interesting comments and I'm procrastinating from doing real work, to be honest. So, um, yeah, don't take this one too seriously. I haven't uh, prepared anything. I just got um, a nice comment on Reddit uh, might be nice to see the randomized depths in increments of material thickness, which I thought was a really good question and something I probably should have thought about when I first did the tutorial. But, um, we can have a look at that today in this, uh, live stream. And I'm going to be really annoyed if work emails pop up on my screen while I do this, but, oh, uh, it shit happens. All right. So this is the uh, hexagon panelling tutorial we did last time. So the question was whether we can sort of be a bit more smart about the depth that we're doing our panels with. Which is good because, uh, you know, you might want to send this off to uh, your router or manufacturer. Or if you're at a uni or something, you might want to cut it with your CNC machine. First thing we're going to do is... Uh, Grab a value list and do right click on that, edit um, 7, 9, 12, 17, 25, 19 as well. Some pretty standard plywood sizes. Could we right click on that again and call it plywood? Uh, we'll do this a couple ways, I suppose. Uh, the quick and easy way, which is messy, and I don't, I wouldn't really recommend it. We, if we multiply, so we take our plywood thickness. Don't need a number slider. Sometimes I'm a big fan of the number slider. I use them all the time, but things like this. Uh, it shows people immediately, you know, this is plywood. That's why these values are there. And you can't really, you know, you can only use real world values. And we can take our random numbers. Um, which means we have to change this, of course. So one is how many plywood thicknesses. To, say six. Let's see how that looks anyway. Now we have a stream of numbers multiplied by nine. Go in there. Uh, one thing that is a bit messy is that our right random number generator generates a float. So if we look there, you can see one point, two point. It's not what we're after, so we'll just grab an integer parameter. That way we divide them, uh, multiply them by full numbers. Cool. So that's, oh, look, honestly, if a student or someone handed me that, yeah, look, there's nothing wrong with that really. I mean, it's fine if you're just doing a render or you're doing it in you know virtual space and you're not actually going to produce anything no big deal but let's say we want to you know we're actually sending this to a workshop to be produced so what we're going to do is we're going to break it down in individual panels plus that gives you more data to work with as well uh, each panel you can pull out the data for how many panels you need to cut or even the area of plywood required, so you can uh, sort of calculate how costly it's going to be to manufacture. So let's have a think about what we're going to do with that one while I sip my coffee. Um, First things first, we don't need, don't need, don't need 
do at the moment. Disconnect them. Got plywood and number generator. Alright. So what we want to do is going to extrude each of these plywood panels by the thickness of our plywood, I guess. That's nine. Forgot our vector. So that's one layer of plywood. All right, cool. So now we've got our number, our step size, we want to be the same. The number, the count, I mean, sorry, will be seven. We'll just have a quick look at the data tree here. Um, that's not good. See, well, we'll, we'll go ahead, we'll fix that in a moment. But that's, that's a simple data tree. It's a single branch, which isn't going to do what we wanted to do. So if we have a look at that, what we're doing is we're generating a series of numbers. So instead of just extruding them once, we're going to move them. Put in a move component. I'm going to grab our hexagons. Take. Disable them for now. You can see straight away that's not not what we want. It's times negative one. That's because our data trees we want to we want a grafted data tree. Because basically it's treating everything on the same branch. So what we're going to do, graph that. So now by grafting that, you see everything's been split into its own branch, which means this isn't working. We just need to flatten our list. See that we've got um, multiple multiple branches coming through our list. So instead of getting the full data list length. So we want to know how many hexagons there are. We're getting uh, what, like 55, yeah, 55 lists of one, which is absolutely pointless. Now, if we, there we go. So now our data trees have been grafted and they match up. So for each hexagon, there's a branch and it is being moved in negative y along that branch. So now if we take that, we'll use our plywood thickness and our freshly moved hexagons. Renable. that again there so now the count that we've got 196 we need 196 panels so if we wanted to know the area we've got the area of a single one so if we just grab that so it's a project for school or something like that. Multiplication, you can say that the area list length 
flatten that. You can go to your workshop manager and say, well, something's gone wrong there, hasn't it? 196 times. Divide that by a thousand just for scale. Where's our expression? X divided by. There you go. That's a bit more usable. So that's sort of that's the reason why you do it like this. Let's have a look at what that looks like anyway. Let's move that back out of the way. Um, middle. And then unrendered. I mean that looks alright. that sort of thing really bugs me it sort of it hides a bit of detail in the materiality unless you're milling that out of a single piece it's never going to be that neat so to sort of just make it a little bit more interesting to look at it also shows that you know you've sort of put some thought into the materials that you're going to be making this out of what we'll do is to a series just x plus say zero point three. So that allows for a bit of glue or something, a bit of uh, silicon adhesive in between. Now, if we back that, have a look at that. I mean, it doesn't change the world or anything, but it just shows, you know, these are individual pieces. There's some adhesive or whatnot in between them. Yeah. Well, hopefully that answers your question and it helps out someone when they're doing a project or something like this. Our next tutorial is going to be on um, attractors or, I don't know, Maybe something back with our Kuka Robotics. But anyway, I hope some of you guys found that pretty helpful. And you took my mind off work for a good 10-15 uh, minutes. Cheers.